In this video, we'll cover these first two items about the visual display of data, um, learning that we should never use statistics blindly, and we should always use graphics to do hard math. So never use statistics blindly. Statistics alone can be misleading, and looking at your data can reveal subtle information. So this thing that we've actually seen before is Anscombe's Quartet. So this is four different data sets. If you look at the x values and the y values, they're a bunch of sets of x and y values. The mean x is the same for all of them. The mean of all the x values is y. The variance of all these values is also 10 for all four data sets. The mean value for the y is 7.5 with a variance of 3.75. And actually, if you best put a best fit line through here, the equation of the line is the same for all four plots. And in fact, the correlation coefficient, which is a detailed statistic that we'll learn about after spring break, is exactly the same. So statistically, these four data sets are identical, but obviously visually, they're completely different. We can use graphics to do fairly difficult math. Math can solve lots of problems if you know how to use it and can solve the equations, but often the equations get too complex. But sometimes we have graphical approaches that allow us to do the math um, and get the answer without actually having to do the equations. One example, this is a famous example. This is Dr. Jon Snow, not the Jon Snow from Game of Thrones, but this doctor from the 1850s. He was interested in a bunch of deaths. So cholera was going around London. It was killing a bunch of people. This is the 1850s, so nobody really knew what the cause was. But what Jon Snow did is he made a map here. This is a particular part of London. Every dot is a dead person. So you can see, oh, there's a person dead here, there's a person dead here. Three people all next to each other. That's probably all three people in the same family. Right? Here's a family of four. There's a family of eight. So this is killing a lot of people. So he put dots on the map for all the people were. And then he thought that maybe contaminated water was the problem. So he went onto his map and he put X's where all the water pumps were. This is back when people did not have running water in their homes. They used to take a bucket to a water pump. So where exactly are the water pumps? Um, here's a better way of seeing them. And actually, you can see there's one water pump in the middle. It's not like there aren't people living over here. They're just not dying, except for these people who, well, maybe went and got their water from here. So what Jon Snow did is he walked over here. He took the handle off the pump so no one could use it anymore. They had to go to the other ones and ended up saving a whole bunch of lives. Now, he could have created some sort of equation that was like the distance between every single death and every single water pump and then solve for like the minimum or blah, 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 and he would have gotten his answer. But that would have been really difficult and required a computer that wouldn't have been invented for another 100 years. Or you can make the appropriate figure and the answer practically jumps out at you. So you can use graphics like this to do very difficult math questions, essentially. Here's a figure showing um, deaths from cancer of the trachea, bronchus, and lung, age adjusted by county. So that's taking into account how old the people are. This is for females. This is for males. And every single county has a shade of gray. And the top decile, so top 10%, are shaded in black. And then white is significantly lower than the United States mean. So the darker the county, the higher the essentially lung cancer rate is for each of the counties. So we can look at this, and if you think about what a table of the numbers would look like, it would be gigantic, right? But with this graphical representation, we have thousands of numbers, all fairly easy to see, and then we can actually see things jump out at us like, what a terrible part of the country this is back then. So keep in mind, this is 1950 to 1969, before um, pollution control improved. You can actually practically pick out the cities, right? Oh, there's Chicago, there's Detroit, there's Miami. Um, and you can see things like, well, there seem to be some trends, like actually here women are dying, but actually men are dying a lot more. So you can see things like, oh, it looks like cities are associated with lung cancer. And there's something about this area that's killing the men more, and it turns out that's going to be the oil refineries, right? This part of the country has a whole bunch of oil refineries where the men tend to work, women don't tend to work as much. So this exposure to the oil and the chemical processes involved in refining it are dramatically increasing the lung cancer rates. And again, this is actually just a whole bunch of numbers 
but when we make this graphical representation, it provides so much more information. This is a similar figure. This is a figure um, from the 1860s showing the percentage of the population in each county that were slaves. And this line here, this shade of gray here, this is basically half of the people in the county being slaves. So actually, if you look at this area here of the country back then, most of the people, the majority of humans in those counties were under slavery. So, well, first of all, don't believe anyone who tells you that slavery wasn't a big deal in the South, because you can see in much of the South, over half of the people were slaves. And this graphical representation, it turns out, was actually really influential for convincing Abraham Lincoln to be willing to conduct a civil war. Remember, having a civil war is such a big deal, and to do it for a whole bunch of people that aren't voting for you is a big move to make. But seeing data represented like this can really convey the magnitude of the problem in a way that a table of numbers is unable to do. And in fact, here's a really famous painting of Abraham Lincoln. This is displayed in the US Capitol building. It shows a bunch of people here. This is the first reading of the Emancipation Proclamation. And you can see there's the figure right there, right? Demonstrating how important this figure was to Abraham Lincoln's thinking. So important that she put a data figure in this painting of these politicians. Here's a similar figure. This is life expectancy by county in 2014. The problem with this figure is that there's actually no natural progression, right? We don't go from white to black. We go from red to purple. So red is bad, right? That's the low life expectancy. But then it kind of wraps around the rainbow and purple is then actually really good. So this has the longest life expectancy here, right? Colorado. This has the worst life expectancy, right? The South, right? Um, these are Native American reservations over here. But as opposed to a black and white figure, which has a clear progression from one end of a scale to another, the use of color is not nearly as clear, right? We have to look down here to think about, okay, so what's good, what's bad? Well, the red is bad and the purple is good. But in LA, I tend to think that green and blue are the best, right? Because of the A and B letter system for restaurants or something. So the point of this figure is there's no natural order for colors, right? If you use colors, you've got to make the scale really clear. And actually, in almost all cases, shades of gray are better than color if you're trying to convey magnitude.